Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, can everyone hear me clearly? Uh, we usually have my co-producer, Rich, from Our Lady of Grace, who uh, gives me a thumbs up. Uh, Rich, if you can't hear me, just text me. But uh, I'm sure everyone can. Um, it is great to see everyone here uh, during this busy season um, for our Good Deed of the Month Zoom. We're back here at the wonderful Greenvale School in East Chester, New York. And yeah, I got my thumbs up. Hold on. Me. Thank you. And uh, we're here with uh, Principal Joanna Napolitano and the student council here. And uh, we're very excited for our project for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. We have our friends from St. Jude on that we're going to speak to in a minute. But before we get to that, uh, we wanted to share some projects that uh, the Greenvale School is doing. Uh, we do that at the top of every Good Deed of the Month Zoom to show everyone, just give, to share ideas of what we're all doing as a community in our school. So uh, so who would like to talk about a couple of projects? That you and what's your name again? My name is Owen. Hey, Owen. So what have you done here at the Greenville School? Um, so there's this uh, Greenville gratitude tree where we write down what we're thankful for and put it on the tree. And I said, I'm thankful for life. Oh, that's great. That's great. I love a green a gratitude tree for Thanksgiving. So did any of you others, uh, other kids put things on the tree? Yeah, our whole class did. Oh, what did you put? I put a lot of things. Shelter, um, my teacher, Mr. Pet, um, <laughs> and like um, my pet, and just like just a lot of things that I have. That's great. That's great. Yes, we all have a lot to be grateful for, uh, especially this holiday season. And there was another project that uh, someone wanted to talk about. Was there another project with the PTA? Oh yeah, we had. You want to come in? I don't know if they can see you over there. Okay, I don't think they can see. I'm on it a little closer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, we had a, a Friendsgiving breakfast. So we, you know, went to down to the cafeteria and we had like breakfast for Thanksgiving. And I think it was a great opportunity to be like thankful for what we have here at Greenville, and it was a great like way to uh, like get more connected, I feel like, with our staff, PTA, and even like friends. So I think that was a really um, fun, it also was a great memory to have like next year as we're a fifth grader, so we're gonna go into middle school. It's a great like, memory, I feel like. That's great, that's great. All wonderful things. I know all of you are doing great things. Um, I wanna welcome so many of our great schools around the world. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have many of the Catholic schools in the New York Archdiocese, Our Lady of Grace uh, and Rich, we already mentioned. Uh, we have many schools from the Diocese of Brooklyn joining us for the first time today. Uh, we have our friends in Gander, Newfoundland, Canada, uh, who will be watching on recording. They have a professional services day today. Uh, and then also our friends from the Hellenic American Academy in Deerfield, Illinois, um, the Costeas Gitona School in Athens, Greece. Uh, we have our friends in Puerto Rico on the West Coast. Uh, we will be doing our uh, Lagumi Good Deed bus in a couple of weeks. So welcome everyone uh, to our December Good Deed of the Month Zoom. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about a charity that's really been at the core of the Lakumi Make a Difference Foundation, and that's St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Uh, many of you know that the Lakumi Foundation started with a series of children's books, the Lakumi Children's Books, and then grew into the foundation. So the third book in our series, Lakumi's Good Deeds, is really the basis for the foundation. And that book um, came about because I was having breakfast one day with John Aniston, Jennifer Aniston's dad, in California. And he was just really inspired by all the things we were doing uh, with the uh, with with the Lagumi books. And he said, you know what, I'd love to be part of that book series in some way. So I asked him, I said, how about you and your daughter, Jennifer Aniston, narrate the next Lagumi book on CD, Lagumi's Good Deeds. And he said, I'll ask. So a month later, I was driving home from work in Manhattan and John Addison called me on my cell phone and he said, Jen will do it. And I was so excited, I almost drove off the road. And uh, John Addison and Jennifer Aniston then narrated 
the next two books in the Lagumi series, Lagumi's Good Deeds and Lagumi's Gift. Um, and it was a wonderful collaboration. It was the first time that they had ever worked together and we were so grateful. Um, unfortunately, John Anderson passed away a couple of weeks ago. So this Zoom is dedicated to him for all he's done for the Lagumi Foundation. But what brings us to St. Jude is all of the Lagumi books donate different children's charities. So when we recorded Lagumi's Good Deeds and Lagumi's Gift, and we were in the recording studio, I asked Jennifer and John, what charity would they like these books that they've narrated to benefit? And right away, they said St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. You've probably seen many public service announcements that Jennifer Anderson has done over the years. Um, so without hesitation, we said, let's donate proceeds from these two books to St. Jude. And I have to be honest with you, I really didn't know much about St. Jude at the time, um, but I heard wonderful things about them. And then when the Lugumi's Gift was released in uh, the fall of 2008, I went down to the hospital. And it was the first time I was visiting, the, the hospital's down in Memphis, Tennessee, and I went down and did a book reading for the kids down in Tennessee. And many of these kids came, we were right outside the cafeteria. Many of them came from their, their treatments. Uh, a lot of them were hooked up to IVs. Many of them didn't have any hair because of the treatments, um, but it was such a warm and wonderful group of kids. You know, you think you go to a children's hospital and it would be sad, but it was so positive and so hopeful because they, the, the hospital does so much for these kids. And when I was reading the book, there was a young little girl there, you know, a lot of great kids, but there was a young girl named Olivia Parks. And Olivia was barely a year old. And I don't know if she resonated with me because she was just, uh, she was the same age as my daughter at the time. Now they're both 14. Or because Olivia had a headband on her head. And you'll see a picture in a couple of minutes. She had a headband on her head with a huge daisy coming out of it. Um, and it just was the cutest thing. And um, we, after the book reading, we talked. I had one Lagumi stuffed animal, I gave it to her. And we spent um, the next couple of hours together with her and her wonderful family. While we were there, we took a picture with Lagumi, our character costume, uh, Lagumi. And I had that picture in my office for several years. Three years go by and I'll never forget that picture. I look at it almost every day. And I went on Facebook and I remember it was very late uh, it, because we were releasing an, the next Lagumi book in the series. And I was very busy and it was like midnight on a Thursday evening in November of 2011. I hadn't even checked my Facebook page in, in several days. So I went on and all of a sudden that picture of Olivia with Lukumi popped up on my screen. And I'm wondering why is this picture appearing on my screen? It was posted there by her grandmother, a wonderful woman who I also met when I was at the hospital. And all of a sudden I see that picture and Olivia's grandmother was, was sending me a message telling me that Olivia was in the hospital. Um, she had a tumor in her eye and she had to have a procedure called, I believe, um, radioactive plaque implant surgery, which basically was they took a chip and implanted it in her eye to shrink the tumor down. But I'm still wondering after three years of not seeing Olivia, why is her grandmother reaching out to me? And she continued to write that since we met three years ago, Olivia always loved reading. And it was very important to her parents that Olivia always read a lot of books so that if the tumor made her go blind, she would always remember the pictures. And then she told me not a night went by when she didn't ask to have one of the Lagumi books read to her since we met three years prior. And I'm sitting there, you can imagine, at my computer with, with tears in my eyes, you know, just um, really making a connection with this, with this special family. I'm happy to report that Olivia now is doing great. Um, she also fundraises for St. Jude. She wrote an essay in this wonderful book, Inspiring Stories that make a difference that we put out a couple of years ago, where she says now she fundraises for St. Jude because it's the hospital that saved her life. Um, so we're very grateful to Olivia and her family and to everyone at St. Jude. And, you know, when I first started working with St. Jude, they told me that I'll have, at some point, I'll have a 
St. Jude moment that will connect with me. And this was my St. Jude moment when I had met Olivia and her family, and she told me about reading the Lakumi books. So um, I hope someday, you know, uh, you know, you'll hear now from, uh, from a couple of wonderful ladies from St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Lizette, are you around? Yes, thank you, Nick. Thank you so much for that intro and for sharing such a be beautiful story. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Lizette Dorado. I'm the executive director in the New York City area. And I'm actually sitting from, um, I'm sitting in Memphis, Tennessee right now. Um, we are hosting our very big St. Jude Memphis Marathon weekend here. So very soon, actually tomorrow, we're going to have 40,000 runners come in to fundraise for the kids of St. Jude. Um, it's actually 40,000 runners from all 50 states and 75 countries. So it's a very cool experience. We're so happy that um, the awareness is kind of growing so much and we have so many supporters coming in. Um, I personally was on the plane uh, I had to take, to take two planes to get here, and all you saw around me were runners, St. Jude hats, St. Jude sweaters, and it was just so exciting to see so much support for the kids of the hospital. So we, I have a couple of slides that I'll talk through, and then I'll introduce my colleague, Lexi, who is also on the phone, I mean, on the, on the computer, and she will um, take the, the presentation after me. So Lexi, if you could just... Um, Go to the next slide. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm sure a lot of you know about the the partnership with um with the foundation and St. Jude and Nick. You you know you just told such a beautiful story of how it got started, but I just want to commend. Hey, actually, Lizette, there's that picture of Olivia on the bottom of the screen there. There is yeah. with the beautiful Daisy. She's just so cute, so cute, and um. It just warms my heart to know that there's so much youth involved in raising the funds to fund and maintain such an important part of our hospital. So as you all know, um, the Lugumi Foundation made a commitment of $150,000 and you guys are halfway there, I believe. Uh, so congratulations on that. Um, but to know that this money is raised by kids all over the world and, you know, just teachers and parents. And um, it's just a really big effort. Um, it also just shows how much kindness there is in the world. And it's because of you that we are able to keep our doors open every day. Um, it, that, that's so important to, for you to really understand. It's because of the work that you're doing and because of the dollars that you're collecting those $5 donations, $10 donations, that's really what keeps our doors open because that's how, I mean, that's that's really how we pay for treatment and, and take care of families and all of that. Um, so since 2014, you've done an incredible job, make a difference day turned into um, just make a difference around the world. Um, and, you know, the, the cards for patients and all of that has just been so impactful to the kids of St. Jude. Next slide, Lexi. Got it. Okay, so the PCC Hematology Clinic Exam Room B1085, that is the room that you all fund. And that is such an important room because the H Clinic does so much for the kids that we treat. Um, so it's a large outpatient clinic um, with dedicated areas for kids to be treated for um, sickle cell disease, some, um, some kids have bone marrow failure, um, hematosis, all of these kinds of uh, major issues that we have to treat kids for happens in the clinic, in the treatment room that you're funding. And so some kids, you know, are a little sicker than others. So they have to come in five days a week. Some have to come one once a month. But at the end of the day, they're walking through the doors that are open because of all of your fundraising. Um, so that's actually really, really incredible as well. Um, and here you see a picture of the H clinic, which consists of, you know, several treatment rooms. And um, it's like on one side of the hospital. Um, but it's such a fun place when you walk through the, the hospital. It just 
to, I mean, if you look at this, it doesn't look like a hospital. It doesn't look like a place where there's, you know, sickness or sadness, because really it's inspiring no matter where you go. So next slide. And I think this is where I turn it over to Lexi. Yes. So I'm just going to pause on going to the next slide till I'll, I'll intro it. And then, cause it's going to autoplay. So, um, but Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here with you this morning to celebrate your incredible fundraising for St. Jude. $150,000 pledge for St. Jude, like Saint, like Lizette said, is absolutely incredible. And it's because of gifts like yours that patients and their families receive treatment, travel, housing, and food at St. Jude at absolutely no cost so that they can focus on doing what's important, which is getting better. Um, and you're not just helping the kids in St. Jude because St. Jude also shares all of our research and breakthroughs with other hospitals. So your gift is actually impacting way more than even just the kids at St. Jude. And, you know, we celebrated our 60th anniversary this year. Um, but when we first opened cancer survival rates for pediatric cancer were at about 20% with an 80% death rate. And in those 60 years, we've actually flipped that number. So it's about an 80% survival rate now, but we still have so much more work to do, which is just why gifts like yours um, are just so important. And we actually have somebody whose story we'd love to share with you. She's a former patient of St. Jude. She wanted to be here today, but um, she is at St. Jude Memphis Marathon. So we actually still wanted to share her story with you. So I'm gonna to go to the next slide and you're gonna hear a little bit about Mary Angelus. My name is Mary Angelus and I was diagnosed at the age of 13 with AML leukemia in Venezuela. They told my parents I had a week left. I wanted to say bye to my friends. I didn't know what to expect. It was very crucial uh, how quick they learned about St. Jude. I was transferred here within days. Walking through the halls of St. Jude, it's always fun because there's so many memories. There's this, this is a specific spot and it's the ABCs of cancer wall. That's the closest you're gonna get to a St. Jude patient telling you what cancer means to them. And it's all so positive. It's all love, it's all hope. My favorite letter is the M. Um, it is because it talks about miracles because I think we, we represent miracles. And that place is a little piece of heaven on earth. It's my happy place. Okay, so as you heard, um, Mary Angelis started her journey with St. Jude over 22 years ago when she traveled from Venezuela to receive treatment, and she's actually become an employee of St. Jude since then. Um, she, uh, you know, St. Jude was so special to her, and she was so grateful for everything St. Jude was able to do for her and her family that she wanted to give back. So now she's here with us, and as I mentioned, she is in Memphis for the marathon, but she was so excited about your gift as well that she wanted to record a special message just for you. So I am going to go to the next slide and play a special message for you just from her. Hey guys, I'm so sorry I cannot be there with you today, but I am actually working at Marathon, which is one of our other events here, but I want to say thank you. Thank you so much because of everything that you guys have fun rates have helped to save children like me. So I really appreciate that you guys are taking the time because when I was a patient at St. Jude 22 years ago, I was in seventh grade and you guys gave me the opportunity to be here today and be a grown adult. So I really, really appreciate everything that you guys have done. And not only that, but to have an amazing room in the H clinic, how amazing is that? Um, it talks about how much love you guys have for the kids of St. Jude. So on behalf of me and the kids of St. Jude, I really want to say thank you. Thank you for everything that you guys are doing. Great. So just thank you again, guys, for everything. Obviously, you can see how much your gift really does mean. Um, you're impacting so many lives, and we're just so grateful to you. So thank you once again, and I'm just going to pass it back to Nick. Well, thank you both so much for that uh, very inspiring message and video. And 
Um, it is because of you, because of these kids that are on this video and, and those before them, we have now raised over $84,000 towards our goal. And what's really important is, um, well, actually, I, I must mention that the Greenvale School, where I am right now, is our number one fundraising school on this project, having raised over $7,000 over the year. So congratulations to the Greenvale School. Um, and now we can talk about what, what you can do to help. We have a, a website that St. Jude has created for us. It's fundraising.stjude.org slash Lukumi. And you can get it from this, uh, from this code and we'll also send it by email later and it's on our website. You can go on there and you can create a team uh, with your school and then any money that's collected from your school will get recorded directly there uh, so that it gets added to the totals for the Lakumi Foundation treatment room at St. Jude. But that's not all. Um, many years ago, I was working with another school just across town here, the Ann Hutchinson School, and they were making cards for patients at St. Jude. And that's uh, how this project started. So we'd like you to make, please make a card. Just get some paper, some crayons, and make a card for a patient at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Um, we prefer that you don't say get well or get better soon, but something happy, something positive. Um, you know, have a nice day. We're thinking about you, um, right? Uh, Lizette, is there any other like positive messages you would recommend? Um, I would uh, definitely say, you know, remind them of how strong they are and um, how brave they are. Um, definitely, like you said, stay away from the get well or feel better, uh, for sure. Yeah, and let them know that we're thinking of them, um, especially during this holiday season. And, and all we ask is that every student donates $1. Um, you may not think that's a lot, but really together, we those dollars add up. And most of the donations in that $84,000 that we've raised through this program are from kids' $1 donations. It's really amazing that we've gotten up to $84,000 from that. And I remember going down to the hospital and seeing a, a big mural on the wall from Danny Thomas, the founder of St. Jude. And I didn't even know this when we first started this project. And he said he would rather have um, a million people donate $1 than one person donate a million dollars. And that's exactly what we're doing. So I hope you will um, organize through your school to make these cards. We'll let you know where to send the cards to. And then also donate $1 for the holiday season uh, for these wonderful kids at St. Jude. And I can't thank you enough. You know, I wanna thank everyone here, uh, Joanna Napolitano, principal from Greenville and all the great kids at the student council uh, for everything they've done. And I thought we would end um, appropriately with a, a book reading from one of the books that John Aniston um, and Jennifer Aniston did in John's memory. It's called Lukumi's Gift. And you'll see that in a moment. Lukumi's Gift, which benefits St. Jude Children's Hospital, actually is based on a true story. So um, for those of you who don't know, I'm an attorney. And when I first got out of law school, I worked for a, a judge and for two years. And every day, um, uh, on, the last, on the last day of work after the two-year clerkship, I came into the office and there was a present on my desk. And I had no idea who gave me this present. It just appeared on my desk. And I opened it up and it was a pair of beautiful gold cufflinks. Now, for those of you who don't know, cufflink is something that goes like on a button on the end of a shirt. And I just couldn't believe who gave me this. And an, an hour later, Daisy, the cleaning woman from the office, came into my office and said, Nick, did you like my present? And I said, Daisy, I says, why, why did you spend so much? You know, she didn't have a lot of money. I said, why did you do this for me? It's very kind of you. And she said, I gave you this gift because you said good morning to me every day. And I couldn't believe that people would not say good morning to her. She was such a wonderful woman. She came in and she cleaned the offices every day. But that's what this is all about. It's all about kindness. And sometimes you can do a kind act and not even realize it. Um, just like what we're doing for St. Jude, something small, just making a card and, and donating a dollar can make a big difference. So in memory of John Aniston, uh, we'd like to play the book uh, that he 
narrated with his daughter, Jennifer Aniston. Lugumi's Gift by Nick Katsouris. Lugumi was in front of the department store, staring through the window like she had done time and time again. Lugumi then noticed the reflection of Daisy, the window washer, who was carrying a pail of water. Hello, Daisy. Lukumi said in a sad voice. What are you looking at, Lukumi? Daisy asked. Those cufflinks. You see the ones over there with the smiley lamb faces on them? Well, it's my daddy's birthday, and those would be the perfect present for him. But I don't have any money. That's all right, Lukumi. You don't need a lot of money to give the perfect gift. A gift is a thought your heart creates and need not cost a penny. A gift can be anything that you wish, made for one or many. A thoughtful act, a handmade card, a delicious cookie or cake. The perfect gift is straight from the heart, whatever it is you make. A gift is a thought your heart creates, huh? Holy cow. That's right. Come with me. I'll show you. And so Daisy and Lukumi went to visit their friend, Fisti was out in his yard singing at the top of his lungs. What are you doing, Fistiki? It's my grandma and grandpa's anniversary, so I'm going to give them the gift of song. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Fistiki sang. Wow, you're really good. Maybe I could sing a song for my dad's birthday. Sure you could. A gift is a thought your heart creates and need not cost a penny. A gift can be anything that you wish, made for one or many. A thoughtful act, a handmade card, a delicious cookie or cake. The perfect gift is straight from the heart, whatever it is you make. You could give the gift of song, Daisy said to Lukumi. Let's go say hi to Dean. I'm sure he will agree. And so Daisy and Fistiki and Lukumi went to visit Dean who was in a class with his art teacher, Gus, painting a beautiful picture. That is amazing! Lukumi said. Why, thank you, Dean said. My big sister is going to college, and I am painting this picture for her dorm room. That's very thoughtful of you, Dean. Maybe I'll make a picture for my daddy's birthday. Oh, I'm sure he would love that, Gus said. What do you like to do together? Hmm, we like to go to the beach and build sandcastles. Then you can paint a picture of you and your dad at the beach. A gift is a thought your heart creates and need not cost a penny. A gift can be anything that you wish, made for one or many. That's right, Dean added. A thoughtful act, a handmade card, a delicious cookie or cake. The perfect gift is straight from the heart, whatever it is you make. Good idea, Daisy said. Let's go visit Marika now. She said that she needed us to help her with something. So the friends went to see Marika, who was all dressed up in a beautiful costume. To be or not to be? Marika proclaimed. Ah? Uh -huh. said. My parents are having a party, so I want to do a show for them and their guests. I am all prepared. Fistiki, you can sing a song. Dean, you can paint the scenery. And you, Lukumi, can do some dancing. They will love it. That could be fun. Maybe I'll do a show for my daddy's birthday. Sure you can, and we will all help. A gift is a thought your heart creates and need not cost a penny. A gift can be anything that you wish, made for one or many. A thoughtful act, a handmade card, a delicious cookie or cake. The perfect gift is straight from the heart, whatever it is you make. Great idea! Daisy, will you come to our show? Of course I will. And so Lukumi, Fistiki, Dean, and Marika all got together at Lukumi's home and did an amazing show for Lukumi's daddy. Then they had cake and everybody sang happy birthday. At the end of the show, Daisy came up to Lukumi and congratulated her. Daisy then handed Lukumi a box. 
open it, Daisy said. Mugumi opened the box, and inside were the cufflinks from the store window that she wanted to buy her dad, but couldn't afford. Daisy, I don't understand, Mugumi said. I wanted to give you a gift in exchange for the gift you gave me. But I didn't give you a gift. Oh, but you have, time and time again. You gave me the gift of friendship. When I am washing windows at the store, not many people talk to me, but you always say hello. That is a gift that means more to me than any present money can buy. It was then that Mukumi realized that a gift really is a thought your heart creates and need not cost a penny. A gift can be anything that you wish, made for one or many. A thoughtful act, a handmade card, a delicious cookie or cake. The perfect gift is straight from the heart, whatever it is you make. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, thank you to Jennifer Addison, who narrated the voice of Daisy on that. Um, and also to John Anderson, his memory. Thank you to everyone at St. Jude. Um, Lizette, thank you. Uh, thank you both for, uh, for participating and to everyone here at the Greenvale School and all the students around the world uh, who are helping us raise money for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Have a wonderful holiday season, everyone, and we will see you in the uh, January Lukumi Good Deed of the Month Zoom. Take care. Bye-bye, everybody.